Okay, another new feature in the QuickBooks 2012 is the Lead Center. Uh, you can get to the Lead Center a couple different ways. So first things first, you can customize the icon bar and add the Lead Center to it. But it normally sits, so I had to add that Lead Center there. It normally sits up here under Company, Lead Center, or Customers, Lead Center. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Notice that it looks just like we're used to having or seeing in a customer center, vendor center, employee center, okay? Uh, except for it doesn't have the transactions tab because a lead doesn't have any transactions associated with it. As soon as it needs a transaction associated with it, whether it be an estimate, a sales order, anything, then you convert it to a customer, okay? So first, you can import multiple leads if you want to. So if you have a list of all your open leads from a outside CRM system, you can import them in here. Uh, once you have the leads in, you can uh, export to Excel the lead contact list, status list, and then also converted leads. Okay. It does have on the side, you can see all leads, converted leads, active, hot, cold, warm, so you can filter it down. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and enter a new lead. So we can put in the name there. You can put in the status, okay? The company name, John's Cars. Okay, the phone number. The website, email address, I mean the Twitter ID, Skype ID, LinkedIn. You can put a whole bunch of information in here, okay? Now you can have, which is which is something that's new, you can have multiple locations. So we're gonna say store one here is at 111 Store Street. Okay, and I'm gonna add another location and say, let's go here and say store two is on street. All right. Now of course you can go in there when you're when you're editing the lead, you can also go in and delete, you know, that location as needed. And then the other difference is you can have contacts and you can have multiple contacts. So I can say John Smith or owner is John Smith and John's email address, okay, you can say he's the primary on it, then you can add an additional contact, so let's just say this is the uh, VP, and it's Jimmy Smith, jimmy at john.com. Okay, so I can have multiple contacts in, in the system, and it's I can also change it. So if Jimmy Smith now became the primary, I can switch him over, but we're just going to go ahead and say, okay, for now. I can add to do's that are specific for John Smith. Okay. So I can go down here and say new to do. Uh, notice that it pre-fills in a call, but I can say I have a meeting an appointment, a task, but we'll keep it as a call. And there might be a low, medium, high priority call with the lead John Smith. When is it due by? I can change the, day, the, the time and date. Okay, now if you have multiple users in QuickBooks, you might want to type in your name here. Because this is not user specific, these to dos are not user specific. Now, of course, it's just one or two people in, or one person in your QuickBooks file. You don't have to add the name there, but if it's multiple users, you might want to put in there your name so that you know who this to do is associated with, okay? Or train your employees to do that, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and add another to do, and we're going to make this one a meeting. Okay, we also have in here the separate tabs. Again, we have our contacts tab, so we have the multiple contacts here. Uh, we have the multiple locations, and then you can also add notes, and this is free type notes. Okay, so I can free type some notes in there, and it does add when it was created on the notes screen here, and it's not editable, edited, 
editable. <laughs> uh, so if I add additional notes here, um, it'll say, please call John. And then it, it adds that, that date stamp right there again. Now in previous versions of QuickBooks, whenever you add the time and date stamp, of course, it's at, you can edit it and this one you can't, which is nice. Okay, so a couple things to note. Uh, these fields are not searchable by the, the search button up here. Um, so if I was to do a search for Sammy, then it's not going to show up here on the screen. Okay, uh, and that's because the results are for the, you know, this information only. Uh, now, if I did a search inside of the here, so I can do a search for a meeting. Okay, nothing for meeting. Let's do a search for slow. Okay, so it comes up, Sammy, please talk slow to Sammy. Uh, so it comes up as Sammy's information because I have some notes on Sammy there. All right, so now one, what's going to happen is now I need to, the customer agreed to talk to me and, you know, during our meeting and I want to go ahead and convert this customer to be, or this lead to be a customer now because I'm going to now provide him with a sales order or an estimate, okay? So I can go up here, so I want to highlight the customer, I'm going to convert or highlight the lead, <laughs> I'm going to convert them to be a customer here. Okay, so it says you cannot undo this action. Are you sure you want to do this? I'm going to say yes. Okay, so now we have John Smith in our customer list. Okay, a couple things to note in here. When you look at the contact information, all that comes across. The build to address of the initial store, so the main store comes across, and also the main contact information comes across here. Uh, the additional we don't have anything additional in here, but you can see in the notes, it does add the notes. Now at this point, unfortunately, I can go back and change the time and date stamp, but the notes are still kept in there, which is really nice. Okay, so that is how the lead center works I, and how to convert a lead to a customer.